Can't go live without lipstick. It's my, it's one of my rules. I don't have a lot of rules. I don't like rules, but one of my rules is don't go live without lipstick. Hi guys, happy Friday. Um, I'm gonna be talking about something. Here's the deal, here's the deal. I honestly don't like talking a lot about fat loss and weight loss because there's a lot of other things um, that we need to be focusing on before we focus on that. However, our 40s gets a bad rap and 40s and beyond, honestly, because people think they cannot change their physiques in a positive way in their 40s and beyond. And I'm here to tell you that's simply not the case because we help women do that all the time. And so like I talk a lot about perimenopause and how to work with your perimenopausal body and how we're prioritizing rest and recovery and we're transitioning. Yes, yes, yes. All these things are true. But it is also true that we can make body composition changes. What does that mean? That means I can build muscle and I can lose body fat. So I just want to make sure that you understand when you turn 40 or whatever, you are not just waving a white flag saying, I give up, I have no control over my body anymore. That's not the case at all. But as you keep hearing me say, we do have to work with our bodies, right? You can't just force your way into things and you can't just, you can't just drop your calories and you can't just amp up your workouts and add a bunch of cardio like we were able to do in our 20s and our 30s, right? I know that's the case for you. The minute you're like, yeah, let's go to Mexico on that vacation. You're like four weeks, okay, I'm gonna drop my calories and I'm gonna go run a couple extra times. Then you felt great and it worked, right? It's not the same right now and that is okay. But that being said, what fat loss takes is the same thing that it takes no matter what age you are. Because I'll get messages from women all the time like, I don't know what happened. I, I gained all this weight, right? Well, we have to understand how much we are eating. Like, hormones aside, you have to have an understanding how much am I actually eating? So if you have found yourself in this position, you're like, Oh my God. And it's about to be, well, it is fall in terms of the calendar. It has not totally cooled off where I live. So I haven't really put jeans on. You're going to put your jeans on. You're going to be like, oh shit. I got to get on track, right? We know this conversation. It happens every single fall when we put those jeans on. So what do you do? You have to assess how much am I eating? Because no matter what your hormones are doing, you have to be in a caloric deficit in order to lose weight. So there's a really good chance for the last three or four months, maybe you were eating more than you realized. And that is why you gained weight. It's not just perimenopause. It's just, not, it's not just hormonal shifts. So first and foremost, assess how much it is that you are actually eating. What else does it take to make these body composition changes and to lose fat? in our 40s. Well, we need to be strength training. Body composition changes, requires us to build muscle. Well, in order to build muscle, we need to be lifting weights. That's how you build muscle. Cardio does not build muscle, right? And I know someone's going to say, oh no, Kylie, I build so much muscle in my legs doing my spin classes. You can build to a certain point, but at another point, you're going to reach this point of diminishing returns and you're going to have to add a different stimulus. Weights is where it's at. So you need to be lifting weights. Then the other thing that happens to a lot of us, which we don't necessarily realize, is our movement has decreased significantly. Happened a lot in COVID, right? Everybody went from going to the office, doing all things, walking to this meeting, that meeting, Nancy's desk, Barb's desk, the lunchroom, all that. Then you're right here all day long. And then you go downstairs and you cook dinner and then you sit on the couch for a couple more hours and lo and behold, you've only got 3,000 steps in for the day. So again, for those of you who you're like, oh my God, where did all this weight come from? Start logging all of your food and drink, anything that you eat in your food tracker, whether it's my fitness pal, my macros plus, whatever. Log everything just to see how much you're actually eating. And I want you to do this for two weeks, so it includes two weekends. It's gonna be very eye-opening because we don't realize you have to, I mean, and enter everything. Enter the little grabs of this and bites of that. 
strength training. Make sure you're strength training. If you don't have time for strength training right now, that is okay. That is okay. But make sure you're getting that daily movement in. A start to assess how many times am I getting up from my desk. If you have a device that tracks your step steps, see, it's very possible that you're getting 3,000 steps in a day. So can you bump it up to five? That's going to make a huge impact on your daily calorie burn for the day. If you're already at five, can you take it to seven? I'm not telling everyone they need to get 10,000 steps in a day. I want you to look at where you're at and how can I make that better if I need to. Then the next thing we have to evaluate truly is our alcohol consumption. This is the one thing in our 40s and beyond, especially when you're in perimenopause, we just can't handle the alcohol like we used to. And it's not just about having hangovers and waking up in the middle of the night for our sleep. It's what it does to our guts because it messes with our sleep and the and our brain, it makes everything worse. Because it messes with our guts, it's gonna mess with our hormones. Because it messes with our sleep, that means we're not gonna be recovering. We're not gonna be working out as hard as we could be. It does not add to your life. And I am never gonna tell anyone to totally stop, right? I, am, I don't do that to my people. We don't do sugar elimination. We don't just say no to alcohol. That's not what I believe in. I don't think that's realistic, but be really picky and choosy about when you're going to have that wine, when you're going to have the girls night out cocktails, if that's something that you guys do, right? You have to like really, this is, you have to be so judicious in when the alcohol is happening because it sh I don't like to use the word should. If it's happening multiple times throughout the week, I will guarantee you, hand to God, that is why you cannot reach your physique goals. So if you have glasses of wine throughout the week, if you made that one shift to where you took it away, girl, girl, as we say in my house, me and Brooks are like, girl, watch your body transform. And imagine if you did like three of these things. Imagine if you stopped with the weeknight wine and don't add more on the weekend just because you take it out of the week, right? I know how this works. I know how this works. And you increased your steps and you got a handle on how much you are eating. You don't need a bunch of supplements. You don't need a bunch of crazy stuff. If you did those three things, you would start feeling so much better in your skin. So again, I know I talk a lot about your perimenopausal body and all the things that we have to look out for, but at the end of the day, it's still not different than before this time. You still can make changes. So I just want to empower you with that knowledge. It's easy for us to throw our hands up because we feel so helpless because our body feels out of control, but we have to own our part of this, for lack of a better word, problem. Own your part of the equation. Because yes, while hormones might be doing their thing, this is fluctuation. These are crazy fluctuations, fluctuations. But if I'm not getting movement in throughout the day, not talking about workouts, if I'm not paying attention to what I'm eating and I'm drinking alcohol several times a week, it's no wonder. So you have a lot more power than you realize. And I just, I just want to give that to you. I want you to feel like, you're not totally in control, but you have more ownership than I think sometimes we we think that we do. And you know, before we had our Revive program, I was helping women in their 40s and 50s forever. They do the same things. They were doing the same things that everyone else does, right? Lifting the weights, tracking the macros, getting the steps in, focusing on the sleep, managing the stress. Now, the stress is a huge player and I don't want to like downplay the fact that stress has a huge impact, but all of these other things are going to help manage your stress. Because when you start eating enough of the right foods, that takes stress away from you. If all you're eating is carbohydrates and fats and just a little bit of protein, your body is not in a place to thrive. And here's what's actually really happening. Oh, Kristen in my VIP group, she's such a gem. Um, she's been with us for well over a year now and she's playing with not tracking. And this was in a major light bulb that went off for her. And I told her I'm going to make an Instagram post about this. She's picked up tracking again because she feels so much better. And she's tracking in maintenance, not in fat loss, right? 
She's like, I feel so much better because what I've realized, she said, is that I under eat when I'm not tracking my food and then I get so hungry and then it reinforces the binge restrict cycle, even though she's not intentionally doing it. So if you have never logged your food or and I'm not talking about logging in an effort to hit macros, I just want you to do it from this place of gaining awareness, log everything. The handful of Ritz bits that you, you know, you grab when you're getting your kid's snack in the morning, the bites of toast that you take off your kid's plate as he's walking out the door, all that stuff. If you just log it so you can see, it's so eye-opening, right? Awareness is the first element of our elemental coaching process. And that is, I mean, that is enough to start creating change. Like, I think we, we, we think change is really, really hard and scary. And it, it can be. It can be for sure. But, like, if something is blaring out at you and you're like, oh, my God, I just got to I just gotta eat less whatever. That's not that big of a deal. I can do that. You'll be pleasantly surprised. But back to Kristen's story, too. This is what we unintentionally do. Oh, so um, G Flute 69, which app to track? Any of them will do. Any of them will do. My, um, my Macros Plus, my Fitness Pal, go with the free one. You could use, um, what is the Outwork Nutrition one? Um, yeah, any, any app will do. The Lose It app. Yeah, and a lot of people do that. So you're not intentionally under eating, you just get busy. And this is a whole other thing we have to talk about, being too busy to eat. Um, you're under eating and then you're starving on the weekends. A phone call came in, I never get phone calls. Um, we unintentionally under eat and then we're starving either at night, so it's unintentionally restrict through the day, binge through the night, or we unintentionally undereat during the week, and then on the weekend we go balls to the wall because we're starving, because we haven't eaten all week, because we've been so good, because I hardly ate anything all week, all of these reasons, and then you go into Monday feeling like a piece of shit because you did all of these things that you wouldn't normally do if you were eating enough. So it just reinforces this pattern of under, over, under, over, feeling crappy on Monday. So it's like no surprise, right? It's, we, and then we, we want to blame it all on perimenopause and that's not it. And I think that's part of the reason that perimenopause gets a bad rap. My beautiful friend, Lisa, who um, is an acupuncturist, I'm going to see her tomorrow. She's talking about like, People talk about perimenopause like it's the end of the world. It's not. It's a natural transition. We're, we're going through it and like fighting it. That's what I'm talking about. Like fighting it isn't going to work. Acting like it's not happening isn't going to work. Just understand this is where you're at. But it also doesn't mean the end of the world for me reaching my physique goals. So it's like two things. Surrendering to the process. But then also taking back our power and understanding what role we play in this time of our lives. So I just wanted to empower you to like know you can lose weight in your 40s. And you know, it's, I don't really care about weight loss. It's those body composition changes that you want, right? You want more muscle. You want to look like you work out because you're working really hard in the gym and you're like, why is my body not changing? You can change your body for the better in your 40s and beyond. I need to ask Coach Lisa if she will let me share her photos lately because she just posted trans, um, transition photos in our group. And this is a time game, you guys. If you can just invest year after year after year doing all these things that I'm talking about, sit back, be patient, and just watch it happen. But I just said the P word, right? Patient, like my post this morning. It takes however long it takes. Ask anyone if you Look at someone who has like legs that you like, ask them, how'd you get those legs? Now, if it's not genetic, you know, some people are born with these amazing legs, but if it's someone like me or Lisa, wait till you see her latest photos, it, to me, it takes five years, five years of heavy lifting to really get those legs. And if you're like, oh, five years, what are you going to do? You got to keep chasing 
some impossible thing year after year starting over or put your head down, do the work for five years. That's what you got to do. Anyone have questions about losing weight in their 40s or anything like that? Oh, when I when I talked about logging food, I didn't talk a lot about um, protein. You guys know you've got to be eating protein at every single meal, 30 to 40 grams. You need the protein. And guess what? You need even more protein as you get older. So if you're not eating 100 grams of protein right now, wait till you're 50, wait till you're 60, because you're going to need even more protein then. So start eating enough protein right now, and that will make all the difference, especially for those of you who are unintentionally under eating, right? And you're starving at the end of the day. If you make sure you are dosing your protein throughout the day, you are not going to be so dang hungry at the end of the day. Anyone who comes to us and they have like nighttime binging tendencies, we take them away when we start making sure they're eating enough protein. Anyone who has sugar cravings, we take those away as soon as they start eating enough protein. It's amazing and it's almost like magic, but it's not magic. It's science. Cool. Any other questions, you guys? None questions? Cool. Well, um, if there's anything that you would like me to talk about, please let me know. One quick reminder um, for my in-person event at the end of the month, the Far From Perfect Summit. I'd love to see you there. I'm doing something different. Um, and you guys, my whole thing too is you taking your life and doing what you want with it, even though it's like sometimes hard and scary. And that's where I'm at right now. Um, I'm being really honest with people. You're welcome, Kimberly. You're so welcome. The reason I'm nervous about it, it's not like presenting and everything. It's like, I'm worried no one's going to come. <laughs> Be honest with you. I'm worried no one's going to come. Um, and so, but what if? Like, doesn't matter because even if no one comes, at least I do it, right? So I just want to, so ADN242, what if your protein is too high? It's going to be really hard for you to have too high of protein. Like too high of protein would be like well over 200 grams of protein a day, which I guarantee you, you're not going to do. So it's like a non-issue. Don't worry about it. Just make sure you're eating enough. Great question. The only reason protein would be an issue is if you already have some sort of kidney stuff going on, but we don't need to be afraid of protein at all. So many benefits, but I'd love for you to come to my event. You guys we will talk about this kind of stuff, like how to work with your body in your forties, but the stuff that's equally as important, mental health, self, um, uh, nervous system regulation. Allie's going to be talking about hormones how to prioritize yourself when you're a super busy executive or just a super busy person, um, and then branding yourself. So not like physically branding, but like personal branding. <laughs> All right, you guys have a wonderful weekend. You are very welcome. And I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.